Hey y'all. Okay, I wanted to show y'all this. Uh, there is a missing girl in Phoenix. Okay, and they say that the disappearance is unique. Okay, because of the circumstances that have happened um, with her just vanishing the way that she has. Okay, so this article was posted on August 14th, which was yesterday. It says, Arizona woman vanishes after sending strange texts to roommate. Kira Bergman's disappearance is unique, an investigator says. And this is her right here. This is one of the pictures of her. And I do have some other ones on here that I'll show. It says, a missing Arizona teenager reportedly sent an unusual text message just before she disappeared. Kiara Lene Bergman, 19, was last seen by her roommate and her best friend, Destiny Hall Chand. The two reportedly worked together at a Glendale furniture retailer. Hall Chand, 20, told the Arizona Republic she and Bergman were at work on August 4th when Bergman became noticeably upset and left work early. Bergman's ex-boyfriend picked her up, according to Hall Chand. Bergman was not at their Phoenix apartment when Hall Chan arrived for work. Police said the missing teen had left behind cars, her car, keys, purse, and wallet. Hall Chan said she texted Bergman several times and ultimately received a response she considers unusual. She was saying that she was going to go out with some guy she met at a store a couple days ago, which is something that's not like her. Paul Chan told KPHO TV, that's not something she would do. Paul Chan told Bergman she would never contact, I'm sorry, she would contact her again once she got a phone charger. She never did. That was 10 days ago, and no one has seen or heard from Bergman since. Bergman is originally from San Diego, according to the Republic. She attended cosmetology school and moved to Phoenix in March with her then-boyfriend, during a Saturday candlelight vigil at Bergman's apartment, family members told the Republic that Bergman and her boyfriend split prior to her disappearance. Her family is very concerned for her welfare, Phoenix police said in a press release. Bergman's mother, Kirsten Bragg, told the San, traveled from San Diego to Arizona, where she's been raising awareness and handing out missing persons flyers. Bragg told Good Morning America it's not like her daughter to be out of contact. She has she said she last spoke with Bergman via text on July 30th, but she wasn't her normal happy self. Phoenix police spokesperson Vincent Lewis told KNBC investigators are stimmied by their search for the missing teen. There is no physical evidence to indicate she was a victim of foul play. Her disappearance is unique. In that we have we don't have any answers and no leads as to where she currently might be. And this is another picture of her right here. <clears throat> Bergman's family is convinced something terrible happened to her. My biggest fear is that they're going to find her and she's not going to be here anymore. The family has started a GoFundMe campaign to raise money for travel and search expenses. As of Tuesday, the campaign has raised over $11,000. Any unused donations will go to the Attention Deficit Disorder Association and the Center for Missing and Exploited Children, according to the fundraiser page. Friends and family members are posting updates on Facebook. They are encouraging everyone to share Bergman's story using the tag, hashtag bring Kiera home. Wherever you are, if you can hear this, if you can see it or hear it, just know that we are doing everything we can and fighting so hard to find you, Bragg told her daughter via the Arizona Republic. Kiara Bergman is a black woman, 5 feet, 3 inches tall, and 145 pounds. Anyone with any information is asked to call the Phoenix Police Department's Missing Persons Unit, and here's the phone number right here. Oh, God. So sad. Um, so many people constantly missing. Okay, here's a, a few other pictures of her. Okay, and it, it helps to see, you know, multiple pictures because 
you know, that way you know what she looks like with her with her uh, hair curly or maybe straight or if it's pulled back or with makeup or without makeup. You know, it does make a difference sometimes. Um, you know, personally, you know, I mean, just from what I gather from reading this and looking at clues, I mean, I wonder if, I mean, have they talked to the, to the ex-boyfriend? that picked her up, you know, because apparently she went missing right after that. Like, nobody's heard from her since then. And, I mean, just from what it looks like to me, you know, it said that she moved to Arizona to be with her boyfriend, okay? They were together at that time, so she moved there to be with him. You know, for some reason, they broke up or whatever. Whatever the case was, they broke up. So she moved there in May. They broke up prior to her um, disappearing, which was on August 4th, you know, so it's like only a few months time period that she's been there till the time they broke up. You know, it looks to me, you know, I mean, just, just making, just going off of what I've read and just making the first assumption on it, you know, it, it, her ex-boyfriend, you know, see, it seems suspicious, and it seems like he possibly could have something to do with it. You know, maybe they broke up, you know, for whatever reason. She didn't want to get back with him. He was upset. And we all know how it is when, you know, you end a relationship and the other person, you know, especially if they messed up. And that's usually how it goes. If it looks to me like maybe her boyfriend did something, she broke up with him for whatever he did. And he was basically, you know, stressing her out and trying to get her back and stuff. And whatever the case was, he must have talked her into letting her give him a ride home. You know, I just hope and pray to God that this young lady is still alive and um, that she's safe. You know, that's the only, that's the sad, that's the scary part, you know, when someone goes missing. Especially in a case like this, like you don't know. So here, I'm going to play this video for y'all real quick. Oh. Let's see if it's going to play. I don't know if I don't know if my computer is going to be nice today or not. <laughs> this is crazy. I am so sorry about that. Okay. Oh. Okay, um, let me just mute this ad out real quick. I'm sorry. I know if anybody has on headphones or if you're in a car, I know that was really, really loud. But that was the commercial. That wasn't my fault. <laughs> okay. I'm assuming that's her mom. Houston Bragg is confused, worried, and exhausted, doing everything she can to find her daughter, who just disappeared last evening at her apartment near 51st Avenue on Thunderbird on Saturday. She's a wonderful person. She's, she's smart. She's Very strong, well, strong minded. She, she knew that very much. much. She, she says it's not like her daughter, daughter Kira, to just take off. She would never do something like this. It was a typical day for Kira. She went to work in the morning, but Kirsten is concerned with who picked her up. Kira's boyfriend, who Kirsten says the two had a rough relationship and had recently gotten to a fight. I've noticed a lot of change in her. Um, she's just, she doesn't seem. She doesn't seem like her happy, you know, her happy self anymore. Her case even puzzling police. We don't have any lead to tell us what type of case this is. Investigators right now have no leads or evidence that can explain where she is or what happened. We just don't have answers, so we're asking for help from the community. But she left her person ID behind, something her mom says she would never do. And every minute that goes by, she's torn with emotion, wondering what has happened to her daughter. She needs to be found, whether it's, whether she is, 
you know, a place somewhere, or she's not. We just need to find her. All the Vasquez, ABC 15, Arizona. That's terrible. It's so sad. You know, these young, young people missing over, you know, because of someone else. You know, someone else's decision. I just don't understand how people feel like, you know, like they have the right to, to literally steal another person. Like, how do you have the right to, to kidnap someone or steal someone's child or take the life of anyone or torture someone? I just don't get it. You know, and the reason I say that, I'm not saying that's what happened in her case, but that's what happens in a lot of these missing cases, you know? And I just don't understand how anyone feels like it's okay for them to do that to another human being, especially if it's someone you love, you know, and that's where a lot of this happens at, you know, it's love, you know, relationships and stuff like that. Someone that's supposed to love you and care about you, not trying to hurt you. Let's take a look at the uh, GoFundMe page real quick. And I'm also going to put the link for the GoFundMe uh, in the description below. And if you do share this video, um, you know, which would be great if you share it. I mean, that'll, you know, help more people see that this young lady is missing and needs to be brought home. Regardless of what the outcome is, she needs to be found. Her mom needs closure. Her family needs closure. And, you know, the time is crucial, you know, in cases like this. Um, but if y'all do share it, please do share, you know, with the hashtag, uh, Right here, bring Kiara home. It's right here. Hashtag bring Kiara home. Okay, let's click on this. Go to the GoFundMe. And like I said, the link for this will be down underneath the video. You know, and I think that that's wonderful that the, uh, you know, whatever is left over that's not used. I mean, that's great that they're donating it to another cause. I mean, that's absolutely wonderful. I love that, you know. Um, you don't really see that all the time. You know, and a lot of these organizations do need donations. Um, but yes, share this video. This needs to get out. You know, this young girl needs to be brought home. And I did want to point another thing out. Um, you know, the way that they described her, okay, uh, this young woman, I mean, by looking at her, you know, I mean, I got the impression she was biracial. But then when I saw her mom, I was like, okay, you know, she's definitely biracial. I can tell anyways. But it's like, the way they have her listed, she's not a black female. She is a biracial female. You know, and they need to be more, um, you know, exact. They they need to they need to have the exact information when they're listing someone's, you know, when they're when they're describing a, a missing person, because if someone, you know, you might not be able to see a if someone doesn't see a picture and they're just saying, oh, okay, well, yeah, there's a young lady missing. You know, she's a black female, you know, this height, this weight, you know, just kind of giving a brief description to another person and they don't have a picture to show them. The person might literally, they could pass right by her walking with a guy or something and they're not even going to pay it any attention because they're not looking for her description. They're looking for a black female. They need to get the descriptions, you know, more precise. Because this young lady right here is obviously biracial, you know, and I'm not getting into like dominant genes and all of this. We're not talking about what's inside of the body. They need a, an, you know, an appearance description. And that's what you have right here. You know, this lady, this young girl right here, and I don't feel comfortable calling her a woman because she's only 19. To me, a 19-year-old is not a woman. You're still a teenager. You know, but this young girl right here is biracial. So they do need to, you know, be more precise with the descriptions um, of these missing 
people. But I just wanted to show y'all this, um, share this video, get this out. Uh, this young lady does need to be brought home. She needs to be found. And she has been missing now for, what, 11 days. 11 days. That's crucial. So share this. Uh, leave your comments and feedback below. Y'all got the number if anyone is in the area or if anyone even sees her in another state. Please call the police. Um, thank you for listening. Y'all have a wonderful day. If y'all need to send me anything, you can feel free to do so in my email or you can add me on Facebook and send whatever you like through Messenger. Thank you. I love y'all and I'll talk to y'all later.